welcome to episode 39 of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali and this is my podcast to talk about all things crochet and knitting and yarn related. All of the crafty good stuff. Uh, I live in Kent in the UK with my husband and our two daughters who are 12 and my youngest will be 8 on Friday. Uh, it is a very foggy morning here in Kent. Um, I've been playing about a bit with the lights because I'm not sure how happy my camera is with it being a bit dark. I did try putting a lamp on but I think it was even more unhappy about that so hopefully we're not going to have too many lighting issues. Um, yeah it's really really foggy. Did I say it was episode 39? Yes I did. I didn't say where to find me. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Starry Eyes Ali and I also have a Ravelry group for this podcast called Little Drops of Wonderful, which is a good place to go if you're joining in with any of the fun and the cows, especially the Strictly Sock On, which is going absolutely bonkers at the moment. I think we're into like the, oh goodness me, I think about a hundred and something finished objects. I did write down how many finished objects. As of 9am yesterday morning, there was 175 <laughs> Um, finished objects in the Strictly Sock On finished objects. I don't know why I'm talking about that now. We'll talk about that later. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, it's only been two weeks since my last podcast, so I am in the uh, podcasting smug zone right now, feeling very angelic, and it'll be my last podcast before Vlogmas starts on Saturday. So I wanted to get a really quick episode. It's not going to be quick. You know it's not going to be quick. Hopefully it'll be quick enough that it won't take me too long to edit. Um, yeah, so I wanted to get an episode in before Vlogmas. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who commented on my last video. I'm so behind with catching up on replying to you all, but I want to say thank you so much for all the encouragement that you gave me about my new enamel pin, which I very nervously <laughs> showed you. It is now up for sale. I have, I already had an Etsy shop because I used to sell little clay ornaments so I just changed the name. Um, the name Little Drops of Wonderful is too long uh, and various um, you know playings around with that had already been taken. Uh, so I went with Drops of Wonderful. So it's Drops of Wonderful on Etsy um, and I've listed them there. I think I've listed 50 of them for sale, so we'll see how that goes. And if they, it seems popular and we run out, I'll have to order some more, I guess, which is quite exciting. Uh, I went to the post office yesterday to work out all the postage costs to the US, Australia, Europe and the UK. Uh, so now I just need to work out um, what slight percentage to put on top of that to cover packaging. Um, my packaging hopefully will all, will all be reused. So at the moment, all the packaging I have for posting is stuff that I already have, so it's going to be reused. And the uh, actual packaging that the pin will be on, so I've got these little tags. It's not going to look entirely like this, but I've got these little tags. And these are 100% um, recyclable. And there's a label on the back which is made uh, from 100% post-consumer waste and is also 100% recyclable. So that was important to me that I didn't sort of add to the uh, never-ending plastic stream in the environment. And here's a little pin in case you don't know what I'm talking about. This is my little, you are a little drop of wonderful pin. And they are going to be £6 plus postage and packaging uh, and they will be on sale as we speak. So I'll put a link down below and I'm really excited about that and really scared too. Ah! So yeah, I really hope you like them and thank you for your encouragement about it because I was really nervous to share those. And thank you also to everyone who gave me tips on sewing my um, Copenhagen bag, which I showed last time. If this doesn't make sense, you just go and look at episode 38. I was talking about a bag that I had sewn from a tea towel I picked up. Um, so, and I had lots of helpful advice on that. So hopefully I'll get that finished before the end of the year. Then I can use it to go, I don't know, shopping in the sales with or when we travel around during Christmas. So thank you for that. I just went really high pitched. Thank you for that. <laughs> right, let's get started. Um, oh God, rambling, rambling already. And I promised myself I wouldn't. Time stamps for everything that I talk about are underneath this video. So if you want to jump to any particular section, you can. And today we are going to talk about 
works in progress. Uh, finished objects, I think I've only got one, um, but I, my notes are a bit sketchy. Quite a lot of it lists things and then at the end says anything else, question mark. So we'll have a rummage in my podcasting basket and see if there's anything else. Um, some incoming things that I didn't talk about last time, um, which includes three, three yarn advent calendars, three. I literally can't wait for Saturday. I cannot wait. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the make-alongs we've got going on, which is the Strictly Sock Along and the Cozy Up for Winter Mail. So I just wanted to share a few things about that. Uh, one, sharing the love, and then I think that's it. I was going to do a blast from the past, but I couldn't find it. So we'll see how we're doing for time, because I do want to keep this quite short so that I can edit it relatively quickly. She says as she rambles on and on. Shall we move on? Where should we start? Should we start with, I know we said we'd start with works in progress, but let's start with finished objects. So I have been taking part. So I made the memory keepers shawl, which is here. And the reason that is there is on a chair because it's covering the fact that the wall behind me needs painting. <laughs> There's no secrets here. The wall behind me needs painting because um, it got scuffed. Uh, because I have children. So the shawl is there not for um, knitting and crochet effect, but to just cover the fact that the wall needs painting. Um, so that's the Memory Keeper shawl. And Lena, who is, um, who is uh, Lena Knits, she is doing a count until the end of the year for the Memory Keeper shawl and also her new pattern, which is the Memory Keeper's hat, which I was really excited about because the minis I was using for my Memory Keeper shawl were a gift from Sandra of the Cherry Heart podcast. Thank you, Sandra. And she sent me this lovely bag that she made filled with, uh, it was kind of like a yarn advent, but in June. So I have now balled up all of my minis along with her little tags that she wrote about them. So, and what I'm doing is they always go into my projects in the order in which I open them. So when I, um, ooh, when I opened them, I wrote down the day that I opened them on. I don't know if you can see that at all. Day 27, might be upside down. Um, so that I put it into the project and fate just decides. All except for one. There's one, or is it two? There might, oh no, there's two. There was two that I took out of that equation because I'm going to put those into my very special um, corner to corner moss stitch crochet blanket that I'm doing. And that is because one of them was a homespun house yarn. Uh, in goblin dance which was just so beautiful I didn't want to mix it with another colour because in the memory keepers project you mix it with another neutral which looks beautiful but I just wanted to keep this in its purest form <laughs> didn't want to water it down so this is goblin dance by homespun house and I'm never going to have any homespun house yarn ever so um, this is really really special so that's going to go into my special blanket and then there was this one which is, um, so Sandra put a little note on each of the minis and she said this is a special one uh, because it's Eden Yarns and she doesn't sell um, yarn anymore and she's used this in a number of different projects um, and if Sandra says it's special, it's special. <laughs> so I've kept this one out as well um, to go into my corner to corner blanket and that's it. So that's an Eden Yarns one, I don't know. In gem, the colourway is gem. So yes, yeah, so I'm saving Goblin Dance and gem to go into my super special scrappy blanket, and the rest of the minis um, have now gone into my Memory Keeper shawl and my finished object, which I will get to, um, which is my Memory Keeper's hat. And I've got enough. Do it, excuse me. Couldn't find it there. Um, I've got enough to make another memory keeper's hat as well. So this little bag of minis, Sandra, has will eventually go into four different projects, three complete ones. Now I modified my first version of uh, my memory keeper's hat, and I haven't blocked it, so it looks really weird. You did, you do need to block this. It says in the pattern just to even out all the stitches, but because I'm going to put it on my head to show you, it doesn't matter. So for this first one, I've only used one, two, three three and a half colours and this time I mixed it with dark grey and with my other one I mixed it with a very very light grey and I modified the pattern slightly, <laughs> get me, modifying knitting patterns. All I did was the Memory Keeper's hat is, and I, I shall put a picture up so you can see, 
I would do a chop here. Um, the Memory Keepers hat is a, quite a floppy hat and I wanted a beanie style hat so I just took out some of the um, repeats and I have written it all down um, so I'll put it on my Ravelry page when I get it up there um, so that I had a beanie style hat. Now I think I might have stopped a little bit um, too soon because the the decreases on the crown are very very quick because obviously it's a floppy hat and it has that nice bunching effect um, like that. So. I think possibly I could have done a few more rows, but let's get this the right way around. I don't think it really matters which way around it goes, but just checking we don't have any bits. So this is my beanie version of the Memory Keepers hat, and I really, really like it. Just going to have a sip of my tea whilst I'm wearing it. Uh, I'm going to come up really close, ready for my extreme close-up. I don't know if you can quite see the texture on it there. It's got similar texture se sections to the shawl. Um, yeah, so I absolutely love this and it covers my ears and it sits just nicely because obviously I've got a fringe. I don't want things coming too far down. Um, although I do feel slightly like a member of ABBA in the 1970s. So I'm pretty sure they used to wear hats like this with their fringes and their straight hair. But now I'm really hot as well. Let's see my messy hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's no vanity here. <laughs> right, am I all back to normal? So that is my Memory Keepers hat take one. I'm really pleased with it. I've already worn it several times on the school run and I absolutely love it. And it's really, really toasty warm because obviously it is, you use two um, fingering weight yarns held together. So effectively it's a DK weight hat. And I'm really delighted with it. And I probably won't block it because when it's on my head, it makes no difference. Or maybe I will just so I can take some pictures for Ravelry. But how cool is that? I'm just sorry, I just saw an end that needed weaving in. So that's my first one. And my second one I'm going to do with a light grey again. And I'm going to make it the full size because I just want to see how that looks. And I like a floppy hat as well. So I can now put that back in the hallway ready to wear on the school run later. That's my memory keeper's hat. Now, I don't think looking in my basket that I have any more finished objects. So let's move on to works in progress. I am not talking about all of my works in progress. I do still have, if you've been watching for a while, you'll recognize this. This is my beautiful bag from Betsy Makes. And this is my beautiful little lobster uh, brooch uh, that my Instagram friend Kaylee made me. Um, and she is Shadows at Midnight Knits. And I'm going to mention her again later. Um, and living in this is my problematic whip. <laughs> I'm making this for my oldest daughter. Um, she asked me to make this two years ago. Uh, I've just really not been enjoying it. Um, and I think part of my problem as well is it's not a hand-holdy pattern. And I haven't made notes. So you work it in pieces. You work a front piece, a back piece, and then you work two identical pieces for the top lace uh, here. Um, and I haven't made notes as I've gone, proper notes, on how I've done the first piece, which I should have done because it would have made the second piece a lot easier to, to get through. Also, I've been working on metal needles with a very slippery yarn. I bought some really cheap and cheerful uh, wooden needles. They're awful. I mean, they are truly awful. You can see, look, look at the cable. They are awful. But the needles themselves have shown me that it makes the, because um, fortunately I bought them just to do the lace. I don't actually need the cable. I'm just knitting it flat. So, um, But it has shown me that knitting with this particular yarn, which is so shiny, it's Seardar Toscana, um, is much better on wooden needles. I'm tempted, I've done quite a lot of work on the first piece here, just realised I've got quite a few needles in here that I've probably been looking for. So this is the first piece I've done, obviously completely unblocked, this is one of the, the front, or, front or back panel. I've done quite a lot of work on it but I'm tempted to frog it back completely and start again using really good wooden needles. Um, just so that I can kind of kick start myself into enjoying it a bit more and maybe even out my stitches a bit more and also because it's taken me so long to get my arse in gear 
I reckon she probably needs the next size up now because I'm making her the smallest size which I think is now going to be too small for her so I think I need to go up there is one two three four five the six sizes so if you think of the range from the smallest to the largest I think second from smallest is going to be better for her now she's nearly she'll be 13 in March and she's tall she's almost as tall as me um yeah so I'm thinking that might be a frog prepare and start again and that might be better what do you think and if you if you agree <laughs> can you recommend uh, some decent wooden needles that would be good for a really slippery cotton yarn answers on a postcard as they used to say on blue peter um okay so that is my problematic whip there is no needle felting progress i was speaking about my gnomes last time um i have finished my gnome but he is sitting in the other room and i forgot to bring him in here and lovely lovely yola who is one half of little french meadow she sent me some fluff that she had that she was never going to use when i say fluff i mean fiber that i can use for needle felting so i've actually gone out and bought a box now and it's got all of my fluff in there that i've had from trying out spinning i put my two drop spindles that i've got in there and my main hand spinner all of my fluff is together um, and all of the needle felting stuff and then um fiona on instagram who is uh, snug as a little bug on instagram hello fiona. um she saw that i was talking about needle felting and she said oh, i've got two books i was literally about to take them to the charity shop uh, and if you want them they're yours so i was like yeah i'll have them definitely because yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the needle felting and i could do with her some instructions about the tools that i need that's the my next problem i've broken all my needles <laughs> i broke i bought four needles at um festival and i've broken them all sorry for all the tea guzzling but it's, it's 20 past nine in the morning and it's been frantic already and i just really need caffeine so she sent me two books one of them is still upstairs next to my bedside table where i was reading it and this is the other one they are both needle felting sort of from the natural world um and they are the cutest cutest books ever it is by fee oberon look at that little bunny look at the quizzical little bunny on the back and it tells you there's a whole introduction about the different types of fibers and the different um, ways to make basic shapes and the tools that you need um, and there's all different um, uh, animals that you can try out look there's little there's a little oh, here we go there's a little chick that you can make no, I can't see what I'm showing you but there is a chick I promise you uh, cows um, birds dogs you can even make woolly sheep so there's loads of things to sort of get you started if you're a beginner and it was also quite interesting um it told you about the different types of fibers and how if you use like a very i can't quite remember but using a very fine fiber to make a, a basic shape that you then build onto is kind of like using lace weight to make a boxy jumper or something you know it's about choosing the right material so i think that's really gonna put me in good stead to to do a little bit more needle felting and really enjoy it uh okay that's needle felting strictly socks in progress so when i last spoke to you i had finished sock uh number one and for once i've actually remembered to bring my sock blockers down very quickly so this is sock number one which i showed you last time just so you know what it looks like Ta -da! This is a lovely pattern by Sandra of Cherry Heart, which she released uh, especially for the Strictly Sock Along. And if you want to make your own pair of these fabulous socks, they are 30% off in her Ravelry store if you put in the code STRICTLY2018 in capital letters. Um, and this gorgeous bag is from Betsy Makes, as is the yarn, which is called Limoncello. Um, and it was on her Strictly Sock base, so and that was especially for the Strictly Sock along as well. Um, this is sock two. Look, I'm doing the heel flap. I had a little bit of a spurt on these over the weekend, um, so I am now at the point of almost turning the heel, and then I it will be plain sailing. Well, not plain sailing, but it will be time to do the foot. I don't think I'm going to have them finished um, for the final as I'm supposed to. Uh, but the cow 
does run until the very end of the year because obviously we do have the Strictly Christmas special uh, to knit through and um, yeah, I won't be drawing winners until um, the new year. So I can, um, I've got a bit of time and I've got so many other things I need to get done before Christmas. I'm supposed to be at yoga right now, but I can't fit it in. It was either podcast or yoga. So I chose podcasting. So that's my Strictly Socks, uh, very quickly. Uh, oh, cable bracelet or mouse. What shall I show you first? I'll show you my cable bracelet first because I want to show you my bag. When I went to festival, I bought um, the cable bracelet making kit. Now, I haven't really done much on this other than it's really, really teeny tiny. These are 2.25 millimetre needles. And I've done, look how tiny it is. I'm showing you the wrong side, but I just want to demonstrate how tiny it is. And I can't wait to make that because I want to wear that at Christmas. It's a really, really nice little um, design. I tried one on at the stall and I really, really liked it. Yes, yeah, so I've got started on that. And it's living in this bag along with my other yarn and bits that I got at festival. So I got this mint bee yarn. Whoops. Um, and a pom pom. And I'm going to make the, oh, what was it called? The Jack and Someone hat. Um, this is a DK yarn. I don't think it has a colourway name. But it's really, really nice and it's quite a luxurious one. Baby alpaca silk and cashmere. Oh, here we go. I've written it on here. For the Olive and Jack hat by Sarah Stevens. So I want to make that. So that's living in the same place. So there's not much to show there. But I did want to show you my bag. So my bag is one of the bags that um, Jilly, who is uh, Mrs. S Creations, uh, sent me. She sent me uh, two bags. One as one of the prizes for the Cozy Up Winter Mail. My fringe is going funny. And one for me and some lovely, lovely Halloween bunting. And I kept uh, the little red one. And then I realised it would be really, really good for some of my pins that I've been collecting. And it's amazing so I've got one singular one on the back which is from Chrissy Crafts and it is life is one big work in progress life is one big whip and then on the other side I've got some of my very very favorite pins this one down here is from a shop we have here in the UK called typo growing up is optional <laughs> I really really like that one and then up here we've got Sybil the sheep which is a pin by Caroline of um, love to sew so she has got an Etsy shop, Cal uh, Love to Sew UK, and she is, I think, Caroline Love to Sew here on YouTube. This little one with the crochet hook and the balls of yarn is by Betsy Makes. This one, the Autumn Enthusiast one, was a gift from my lovely friend Sarah, who is Sarah One Daisy, and it is from Ann, um, Leslie Ann Makes or something. I can't quite remember. I'll put it in the link below. This one is my Hey Barbara pin, which is from Ellie of Craft House Magic. I love this pin, front and centre. And then that is my own pin because, yeah, you've got to have your own one on there as well. And how good do they all look? Am I in focus? Um, how good do they all look on my bag? So that's a perfect little bag for pins. Um, yeah, so I don't know if she's got any more of these in her shop, Mrs S Creations, but if you're looking for a bag for pins, I've been trying to make myself on for ages and failing, so that's just saved me a big job. Thanks, Jilly. Okay, final work in progress that I'm going to show you today. I'm just going to double check that I am in focus. Is that better or worse? I don't know. Is living in my bag here that is from uh, Lily of Nordic Stitches. Now, she sent me two of these because um, we are doing an advent swap this year. So hers is one of the advent calendars that I will share with you a bit later. And as part of that swap, we sent each other a bag. So she sent me a lovely, lovely, um, sturdy Merry Christmas bag with tartan on the bottom. Um, and she sent me another one, which I'm using as one of the prizes for the Cozy Up for Winter Mail. Um, and it's got this lovely, lovely Christmassy Nordic kind of lining in it. And it's chock-a-block full because it's got two different projects. Actually, three really, but, but I'm rambling. I'm really worried about the light sorry if it's weird so in here looking a little bit covered in ends because I haven't quite been confident enough to sew them in yet just in case I have to make any adjustments 
is my very first knitted, oh, apart from, I did make a little kindness monster out of very chunky yarn. But this is my very first knitted toy. He's got no eyes, I have to go and find some beads. Um, or she's got no eyes. It's a little mouse. And this is the mouse from the Knit Me, Love Me, Dress Me book by, um, I always forget her name, Sue Stratford. Um, and it's got patterns in here for quite a few different little animals you can make. And then it's got patterns, sewing and knitting, for all of the clothes that you can make. So, I don't know, that was Alexa making a noise, but I'm not sure why. She's gonna take over the world. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so this is the book and you can make all of their clothes. So I've made the mouse. Uh, yeah, I found it quite difficult compared to making um, a creature with crochet. But I got there in the end and it was quite quick actually to do. Oh, and they've got, he's got a little tail. She's got a little tail. And I'm in the middle of making the second part of her vest. So I made, this is in cotton actually, as a vest should be. So this is the front part and then there'll be a back part and then there'll be a, like a trim and she'll have um, a vest and knickers eventually like that. I have made a trial pair of knickers, which if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen I was blocking the other day. So this is her trial pair of knickers. <laughs> and there's a little hole at the back for her tail. Um, I'll put, so I put them on her. Um, I've also made um, a little skirt and a little bolero, which I'll show you. But while I'm putting the knickers on, I'll just say that I found it a bit tricky because although they're very miniature knitting patterns, they are proper knitting patterns. And I realised when I started making them that actually my knowledge of making garments is almost completely non-existent. So I really did struggle with things like um, on the bolero where it says you knit the right side and the left side and then you attach it. And I was struggling with or what 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 end is the top end yeah yeah so I'm obviously a bit inexperienced but I had to sort of have a word with myself and tell tell myself to stop overthinking mouse clothes <laughs> and just get on with it so this is her in her pants <laughs> someone on Instagram used the word undercrackers which I think is hilarious so this is the mouse in her this is her spare pair of knickers um, because her actual pair of knickers are going to be white with purple trim just love them and these are all just from little minis that I had I think this purple mini was in a swap that I did with uh, Shelly um, earlier this year and the pink is actually from a little mini by uh, Biff Sugar Yarns so that's her knickers and then oh, I, should, I just took them off I should have left them on her this is her um, none of these have been blocked I don't know do you need to I should probably block it um, this is her bolero now uh, you'll notice possibly that the, um, the rib around the edges and the sleeves are a slightly um, different tone of yellow to the main part of the bolero. <laughs> and that's entirely deliberate and wasn't at all because I ran out of the mustard colour uh, before I got to the sleeves. Okay, just in case anyone asks. That was an entirely deliberate design decision. How cute is the little Pharaoh cardigan? I made I made a garment. I said I would make a jumper this year. I can tick that off my list. I didn't specify that it had to be adult sized. One completed cardigan and it took me only two weeks to make. Amazing. Uh, right, I'm in the middle of knitting her a Hufflepuff scarf with leftover uh, yarn from Phoebe's Hufflepuff um, uh, cow, just um, garter stitch. I think we're having problems with focusing. Um, I don't know if that's going to be done by, well it's got to be done by Thursday night hasn't it? And I need to do the knickers and vest. This needs blocking um, but it's going to be a skirt. Um, it, I think it's a little bit big so what I'm going to do is put a, make it like a wrap around skirt and put a button on it so it kind of does up at the back and then she can put it on and off. But it does need blocking because it's lace. Because that should, that should obviously all be a bit further down like that. So that's her little wavy skirt. So she'll arrive um, to Phoebe with all of her little clothes. And then I'll let Phoebe go through the book. 
and choose any other clothes that she wants. There's absolutely everything. There's socks, there's dresses, there's dressing gowns, Christmas jumpers, um, there's swimming costumes. You can even make them little beds and everything. It's such a cute book. Um, I can't wait to make, look, here's the swimming costume. I can't wait to make all of these little things in the mouth. And you can make them like little picnic blankets and everything. So that's been that's been quite a lot of fun to make. It would have been more fun if I was not under a time pressure to get it all done for Thursday in time for her birthday on Friday. Okay, moving on to incoming. So as I've said, I've got three advent calendars to share with you. But before that, I just wanted to uh, show you a couple of things that I haven't I got a while ago and haven't like had the time to show you. Um, because I keep rambling. So the first thing is, and I've probably not got it all here. So my friend Christina, who lives in Arizona, is a blooming cactus on Instagram. And we've exchanged a couple of parcels um, uh, occasionally, and she just sent me something completely out of the blue. So thank you so much, Christina. This was just before Halloween that this arrived. Um, and she sent me a few little treats from Arizona. So she sent me um, some little treaty bits and she made me a scarf. How amazing is it? I mean, Christina has got four children. Is it four or three? Four children. And they're all really young, yet she found the time to make me this beautiful scarf. Isn't that amazing? Look at the colours of it. And it's just the perfect shape as well. It's like the perfect, proper kind of scarf shape. I've worn this a lot. I love this colour as well. I don't know why I've just bundled it around me quite so much. I think just to demonstrate how warm and snugly it can be. So I wore this in my Halloween vlog quite a bit because it was keeping me warm as we were traipsing around castles. I absolutely love it. And she also sent me this amazing, this is um, an Arizona based designer. Um, her name is Yumiko Alexander um, and I believe that the yarn that she used to make this is from Arizona. Uh, I think, did you dye it Christina? I think Christina dyed this yarn um, herself um, and then this is the designer uh, from Arizona and this is a whole collection of her patterns and they are all stunning. Let me show you. Right, so this is a lacy top that you can wear over the top of a t-shirt or a vest. So pretty. And then you've got these beautiful asymmetrical shawl. And then I really like this one. This is called Smoke. They're just such beautiful patterns. Look at this wrap. Just try and show you some of the detail. Absolutely beautiful. So I think the designer was originally from Japan. I'm really hot. I'm sitting right in front of a radiator. Um, I think she was originally from Japan uh, and now lives in Arizona. So what a brilliant gift. And that wasn't all she sent me either. She also sent me, I'm just gonna pop that back in there. Um, in here, so there was this postcard of like a, a lightning storm and the yarn has obviously been dyed um, to match the picture So, because the, the yarn is by Gherkin's Bucket and the colourway is called Monsoon. I can get this in there. You can see the pinks coming through in the grey. In there. And it's picked up all the colours of the photo of that kind of monsoon stall. It's amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. It is an 80-20 superwash merino and silk. So this is going to have to be used for a very precious project. If any of these are for a one scheme um, project, then one of the this is what that's going to go to so i was really impressed with that and she also sent these little clip bead things 
for my girls and they played with those and bear in mind my eldest is almost 13 so it's very rare that she has something which will absorb her in play for that amount of time um oh they played with those for hours hours and they still get those out and play with them so thank you so much christina that was an absolutely wonderful surprise and i definitely owe you some uh, after eight minutes, but I remember I have to send them at the right time because if I send them at the wrong time, they're just gonna melt. <laughs> so thank you, Christina. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share was I got my little French meadow mini scheme um, cup and some other minis and something I bought. Let's get it all out. And first of all though, um, I can't remember what the prize was for back in the summer but I sent a I think it might have been for the dodgy bag along perhaps um, I sent a prize out to the prize winner who is Ellie um, and it was this beautiful yarn that I really didn't want to let go of um, by Little Stone Cottage Yarns and I think it was in the Going Bananas colourway and she won that as a prize and a dodgy bag well this is a first for me I have never had someone who has won a prize send it back to me but not in the way that you might imagine. So Ellie, who is will.i.am on um, Instagram, uh, I got a note back saying that she was sending me back the yarn and she also sent me a few other bits, but this is how she sent the yarn back to me. Hang on, I haven't finished. This is not the best part. So this is is the most beautiful knitted lace shawl in yellow, which I love. With tassels, it's got tassels. <laughs> I just feel like the luckiest person in the world that I've got a cow, which I wear all the time at the moment by Alice, uh, who is Alice Close Knit. I've got a beautiful, um, Patchwork Knitted Cow by Hannah of the Hannah from Sheets Alley podcast. Um, and I have got my new scarf from Christina. And now I have this from Ellie. It just blows my mind that people make, take the time and the effort that goes into making these things. I need to do that more. I need to send things that I've made to people, knowing how it makes me feel. That's an aside. How perfect is this? Did she put what the pattern is? Let's have a look. The pattern is by Swedish designer Maria Samuelsson and is called Souvenir Shawl. It's designed for all the single schemes of beautiful yarn that we just have to buy. <laughs> so, it, and it sits perfectly. In fact, now that I've shown it on the podcast, I might wear this and my memory keeper's hat for the school run later. It's not that cold today, I'm gonna to be sweaty. Um, yeah, so this is my um, beautiful souvenir shawl with tassels. I absolutely love it. It's the first time anyone's ever sent a yarn prize back to me, but in the nicest possible way. She also sent me this beautiful little card, little drops, and this beautiful notebook. I love a notebook. I do love me a notebook. And this is blank pages, so this is good for sketching. Um, yeah, I do love a notebook. And she sent me three little mini schemes and these are all gonna go into my uh, corner to corner moss stitch blanket. One is the little bit of remainder. That's how much she had left when doing the shawl, the 100 gram scheme um, of the going bananas. And let's see if she said what the other two are, the mini schemes. Uh, the pink yarn is the yarn I used to knit my first ever vanilla socks, which is this one. And the darker one is the one I'm using for my Strictly socks. There we go. And there was a Progress Keeper. There we go. So the Progress Keeper is from, oh, P4 Chen Knitography, who is Patricia. And let's see if I can find a good way to show that to you. So that's from P4 Chen. How gorgeous is that? It's a little wood burnt. Progress Keeper, whoops. Um, yeah, so really, really delighted with that. Thank you so much, Ellie, for that was such a surprise and it did really, really make me chuckle that you sent the yarn back. <laughs> okay, right, mini 
these and other little bits. So first of all, my little uh, French Meadow mini skiing club for November um, arrived. And the theme was cozy moments. And the two yarn colorways were Granny's China and Warm Blanket. And honestly, I think this is one of my most favorite ones to date of um, Alison and Yola's mini skiing clubs. So I'm guessing Warm Blanket and Granny's China. Why can't I get these to do what I want them to do so I can show them together? <laughs> How pretty are these? Oh my goodness. At the moment I'm keeping all my little French meadow uh, mini skeins in a jar because I want to use them all in a um, project together. And this is, there's always a progress keeper with the mini skein cup. And it was cake, cake and a fork and knife. Now I want cake. And there was also a really nice tea bag, vanilla chai. That is my favorite chai. Anything spicy and warm like that is my favorite. So that is the uh, Little French Meadow Mini Steam Club for November. Still one of my favorite things. Next year, uh, I'm gonna, so I thought of my word for next year. I didn't do this. I have never done this before, um, but everybody seems to do it. And I've had this word going through my mind for months after quite a horrendous year. My word for next year is simplify. And one of the things I'm going to do is stop getting uh, the subscription. Well, I, I get two subscriptions to magazines that have been, both been bought for me as gifts for like birthdays and things. One of them is to Simply Crochet and one of them is to like an interiors magazine. Um, and I'm going to, I've said to the people that normally get those for me to not get them anymore because I get overwhelmed with it. I like reading them and I wouldn't mind buying them occasionally throughout the year if there's something I particularly wanted to look at. But I just get completely overwhelmed with all the inspiration. Is, is that weird? <laughs> and I need to simplify the information that's going into my mind, I think, a little bit next year. So that's one of the things. But one of the things I will never, ever stop getting is my subscription to Little French Meadow Mini Skin Club. There's simplifying and then there's just crazy. So. Okay, more minis. Uh, I gave, I bumped into my lovely friend, Instagram friend Sarah, who is Yarn Mugs on Instagram. We bumped into each other and had a little chat at festival. And I wanted to give her one of my pins and completely forgot. I purposely took one along to give to people I knew I was going to bump into. And plus a couple of extras in case. But completely forgot to give it to her. So I sent one to her uh, in the post. And she sent me a couple of little minis. Look at these yellow minis. These are also going to go into my blanket. So I'm really, really pleased with those. I'm not sure who they're by, but they're gorgeous. So well done, whoever it is that actually did dye them. <laughs> what did she say? Let's have a quick look. No, please enjoy. Thank you, Sarah. So I just wanted to show those because they're pretty. And the other thing I wanted to very quickly show you was I ordered some postcards from Lana Boo's shop. Let's see if I've got the, um, here we go. So she's Kate Constable, Lana Boo shop. I've ordered some bits from there before. Uh, this is all her details. She sells loads and loads of crafty related things, uh, crochet and knitting uh, related pins and necklaces and all kinds of lovely stuff. Um, and it came, so I can't remember, what was it I ordered? I, I, I think I ordered a Christmas card. Um, like a themed Christmas card. So it came with like two of her little cards and the cards are really nice. You could just put them up. They say eat, sleep, eat, sleep, crochet, repeat. And then this gorgeous little square card with just a little flower on and that's got a little thing saying, you know, make sure you leave us a review, which I shall do. Some sweets and then a postcard that says squish more yarn, which I can put up in my little desk area over there and a little vinyl sticker so much yarn so little time and that all came as little extras with I think I can't remember what I bought whether it was a pin or a Christmas card and I just wanted to show you that because it's just a really good example of what it is like to buy something from a small business like the the extra detail and the care and attention that goes into what they do 
that you would buy one thing and then they would send you all those little extras. It just makes you want to go back again and again. I ordered something from a really big company the other day. It was, it was just a key ring to put in uh, Lilia's stocking. And it literally came, it was a key ring in a plastic bag, like a little unnecessary plastic bag. And that was it. There was no thank you for your order. There was no information. There was no, you know, hit backing or packaging, nothing. It was just a useless bit of plastic. But when I ordered a simple Christmas card, a handmade Christmas card, I got all those little extras. Yeah, so by handmade. Excuse the quaint clean for one second. I wanted to show you this because it's just adorable. It's very old fashioned and adorable. This cost me £1.20. I bought this from the local sort of needlework guild, the retired ladies, they were all in their 80s at uh, the church frosty fair which we went along to because it's the church where my eldest does her guides so we go along to support them in things like that because they let them use the hall at a reduced price and there was the ladies selling uh, jam, marmalade, lemon curd and lavender pillows and they were charging £1.20 for them. And there's obviously quite a bit of work gone into it. It's stuck chock-a-block full of lavender. There was more lavender in there than you can shake a stick at. And it's just so old fashioned. And I just, I was like, bless them. So I had to buy myself a little pin. I'm gonna hang that in my wardrobe to ward away evil moths and keep everything smelling nice but I just wanted to show you that because I know that you will all appreciate it like I appreciate it. Finally and I'm just gonna uh, check my time now I'm all right. Um, we went on Sunday to the Warner Brothers Studios um, in Watford uh, to do the, Har um, the Harry Potter studio tour and at this time of year it's all snowy and they've got the grand hall done up for Christmas and everything and it was the first time we've ever taken the girls and they were absolutely blown away. Now I am a Gryffindor uh, as is Lilia and Dan and Phoebe are both Hufflepuff so they took their um, cows that I made them uh, and they wore them the entire way around. So here's a picture of them outside the Harry Potter studios wearing their um, cows out in the wild. And they were really, really pleased with them. And in fact, Phoebe's worn hers ever since. Um, she's, she's worn it to school every day this week so far. It's only Tuesday. Um, and I bought myself for my pin bag, my own little Gryffindor, my very, very overpriced Gryffindor pin for my bag. Do you wanna see how much it was? I was so incredulous that I went out of focus. So I got myself a little Gryffindor pin to put on my bag. So anything else? Oh, I also wanted to mention before I get on to the lovely yummy yarn advents that I've been sent a few um, patterns um, recently as gifts. And I very rarely mention patterns that I've sent and I haven't printed them all off, but I'm gonna put some pictures up. So I have been sent, um, from Lily, her Christmas advent, advent, Christmas, winter sock club. And she's released two patterns in that so far. So I'll put a couple of pictures up here. Um, oh, I don't know if I can, can I do that? I don't know, I'll put a picture up of something. Um, my sister has it too, and she's actually been making the socks and they look amazing. I haven't had time, of course. Um, but thank you, Lily, for sending me that. Um, I will be making them. It will just take me forever, as you know. <laughs> Um, I've also been sent the, um, what's it called? It's a scarf from, um, and it was our Minty that sent it to me on Ravelry, um, which was a complete surprise. And it was a scarf that I have had in my um, Ravelry favourites for a long time. And I've got the exact skein of yarn that I want to use for it. I know exactly what I want to use for it. And she sent it to me as a lovely surprise. So I put it up here and the name, which I've completely forgotten. So thank you so much, our Minty. I was also sent a copy of the Swish and Flick Socks by Naomi of Cozy Cute Knits. She is doing her first sock collection, which are all uh, magic or Harry Potter related. And this is the first in the collection. Um, uh, so she sent me a copy of that. She's also given me a, a, a copy to give away during Vlogmas. So I'm gonna do a couple of little giveaways during Vlogmas. Uh, so 
if you are interested in earning some pattern, earning, winning some pattern uh, prizes at all, make sure you tune in for my Vlogmas series because there will be opportunities to win things during it. So thank you so much for that, Naomi. Um, and I also was sent uh, the pattern that Sam of Betsy Makes did. Um, if you, you have to go and watch her last episode where she explains that she designed this for Kirsty's Handmade Christmas and then they never got back to her and I just don't understand it because I watch Handmade Christmas every year and some of the stuff is questionable <laughs> but this is not questionable at all it's absolutely stunning so she designed a patchwork Christmas stocking there it is handmade Christmas stocking um, with a crocheted topper to it so obviously they didn't get back to her which is their loss and she's now selling the pattern on Ravelry, on her Betsy Makes Ravelry store, and she sent me a copy. So I, if I can, would rip my sewing skills, as we all know, it's slightly questionable, but I would love to make that in time for Christmas. So I printed it all out. I've got all the pattern, and yeah, if I get a bit of time in December, hopefully, maybe I might be able to do it. I don't know. If not, it'll be ready for next year. So thank you very much for that, Sam. Um, right, so we get on to advent calendars. Stop rambling, start talking about advent calendars. My first advent calendar is my swap that I did with Lily of the Nordic Stitches podcast. So we did this last year. I don't think I was very good at it last year. So I still feel so terrible about that. Um, and bless her, she asked me to do it again with her this year. So she obviously hasn't given up on me. <laughs> um, and I sent hers off in plenty of time. So last year, mine nearly didn't make it. I think it arrived maybe a couple of days late for Advent. Um, but yeah, so got there in plenty of time this time. And this is mine, it's all in this beautiful little um, bag. And obviously I've got my Christmas bag that came with it. And then this is all of my Advent minis. And she has hand drawn the tags on each one. How amazing is that? So that is number 23. So basically we do five grams a day for 23 four days except on Sundays when it's 10 grams on Sundays and then on Christmas day we do 50 grams to go under the tree look at all her little hat and she's hand drawn each and every tag that goes on amazing so I will be opening I've got to find and then open number one in there on Saturday so that is my first yarn advent and then and this was a little while ago now, completely out of the blue, a complete surprise. I um, got a box in the post. It was one of those moments where you go, huh? what's this? I haven't ordered anything. Must be a mistake. And um, box. <laughs> I will show you what's inside. Without spilling it, can you see who it's from? If you can't, it's from Little French Meadow. This is the Little French Meadow 2018 advent calendar, which I would have loved to have bought, but couldn't afford it. I would love to buy yarn advent calendars, but I think what I need to do is maybe save up throughout the year. Actually, yeah, that's what I might do for next year. I might save up throughout the year so that when it comes to sort of October I could treat myself to a yarn advent because I, I guess I just talk myself out of it as something that's frivolous but actually it brings me probably the most joy Look, when I first did it last year I cannot even tell you it was just the best thing the best thing ever and um, so Alison and Yola bless them sent me a little French meadow advent calendar which includes by the looks of it uh, a, a, a full scheme or half scheme but it looks like a full scheme for day 25 so I can put that under the tree look how beautiful they're all wrapped not long till I can open them so and also she said something very mysterious on message she said don't put it near to a heat source apparently the elves don't approve of that. So, what else doesn't like a heat source? Mmm, chocolate. 
we sh all will be revealed over Vlogmas. So I'll open those when I'm doing Vlogmas. Can't shut the box. So, oh, just, I'm so excited about that. So excited, I don't know where to put it, put it back here. Thank you, Alison and Yola. I'm absolutely blown away by being sent such an amazing, generous gift like that. Um, and it's going to be one of these gifts that just stays with me for a very, very long time. And I've got to find the perfect project. So Lily's Minis will go into the project I started with Lily's Minis last year, which is a crocheted triangular shawl, which I'm hoping will eventually become a very nice triangular kind of snuggly blanket for the sofa. And the minis that I've got from Little French Meadow, I'm thinking I might make something like the Land of Seats cow because that was also a gift pattern and might work well with all Little French Meadow yarns. So we'll have to see. Then, quite out of the blue, <laughs> again, I got another parcel from Rose Hip Island. Now, I knew straight away that I hadn't ordered it because she's in Australia. <laughs> and um, with the customs rules that we have here, um, I never order anything from abroad. It's just, it's too much of a lottery. But this was a gift from lovely Hilary, who watches this podcast and is really, really active on the uh, uh, Ravelry group as well. So thank you, Hilary. She has sent me some really generous gifts already. So Hilary, I owe you. I owe you British yarn. Let me know which you want. Um, and this is the 12 Days of Christmas warm set. So I saw this on Instagram because I follow Hannah, who is Rose Hip Knits. Um, Rose Hip Chick on Instagram, um, that you could choose. You could do a warm advent or a cool advent. So she had two different ones and they are the 12 days of Christmas. So you can either open one every other day in the lead up to Christmas or you can do it in, uh, I think it's the 12 days of Christmas from Christmas day through to January. So I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to do. And they all look like this. 12 little parcels. So that is my third advent calendar. Amazing. Thank you so much to Hilary, Alison, Yola and Lily. I am going to have a lovely December. Right, on to cows and mouths and all the make along, sock along things. So first of all, the Strictly Sock Along is well underway. I think I say that every time. Of course it's well underway, it's nearly finished. I think the last um, episode is on the 8th of December, but the Strictly Sock Along itself goes on until the end of December. So uh, you've got plenty of time to finish those socks and I won't be drawing a winner until the new year. Well, winners, because um, I've got quite a lot of prizes, as you know, if you have a look in my Ravelry group, I have done a prizes thread. I've still got a couple of things to add in there just because I've been a bit slow uh, with some of the stuff that came in a bit uh, later. Um, there was a big list of prizes there. So I need to go in actually and edit which ones have already been sent out as well because it helps me to keep track. Um, and there are different prize categories and the latest prize category is the um, Made It to Blackpool prize. So I've actually drawn two winners for this because there's just been so many um, finished objects in there. So here in the UK when we watch Strictly Come Dancing there is always a week when they all go to the Blackpool Tower Ballroom which is like known as like the home of ballroom. It's where lots of famous competitions take place and they go there for one of the shows and they dance on the sprung floor there and it's quite a big thing. Uh, and it's a big thing if you make it that far in the show they all seem to like if they make it to Blackpool that's a big thing. So if, and if you had a finished object in the thread by the end of the Blackpool weekend, so like Sunday, uh, Sunday the 18th or the 17th, I can't remember what the date was, then you were eligible to be in the prize draw for uh, the Made It to Blackpool prize, uh, prizes. Um, so I drew those winners, uh, I went in and as of the end of Sunday, there was 165 finished of 165 finished objects in the FO thread on the um, Ravelry group. So I did not use Alexa this time. I went online and used the random number generator and it pulled out number 24 and number 89. So number 24 
I pulled out this prize for and I can't show you it because I've already wrapped it all up so right at the beginning of the cow to get myself organized I wrapped up a load of the prize parcels and put them in envelopes ready to go so that um, I, it won't get delayed because I knew in the run up to Christmas I'm gonna need to help myself every way I can so in here and I will put a picture up is the bag and yarn that was sent to me by uh, lovely lovely Suzanne who is inside number 23 on Instagram and she had made me a lovely bag which I use all the time and she's also made one of the other bags that we gave for the Halloween prize and she has made this bag and donated some yarn as a prize. So this is going to post number 24 in the FO cow and that is Sally Healy who is Kat. Now, this was really funny. So uh, Kat has made two pairs um, uh, of socks that have gone into the FO thread. Uh, it was 24 that was drawn out by random uh, number generator and I went to have a look at her details and it said I am on Instagram as at my chaotic bliss at which point a little light bulb went in my head I was like my chaotic bliss why do I know her because she is donating one of the prizes for the cozy up for winter mail and we've had some postal issues uh, which I know was stressing her out a little bit so Kat was so pleased that um, your name came up because I felt like you really deserved it because you've been so kind and you've done two pairs of socks for the sock along and I know that you've been really chasing up some issues with post and stuff and that you're feeling a bit stressed out about it. So well done. Your number was called out and you've won a really beautiful prize. Um, if you get in touch with me with your address, I will get that sent out to you as soon as I can. Uh, and the other number it called up was number 89 and oh I was really pleased about this because this person I've seen a lot on the chatter thread and um, I, from, I think you did you join in last year as well I can't remember I might be making that up uh, and it was num it was Kim who is Woolly Kim uh, she's made one pair in the FO thread so far uh, and she always does make me laugh she calls her husband Woolly Him is it Woolly? <laughs> I just think that's funny uh, and in here, or also, or, oh no, I haven't wrapped this one up so I can show you. So this is the um, uh, the bag that was made and donated by Michelle, who is Pictures in Threads on Instagram. And she is also on Etsy where she sells her lovely bags there. And she did this one especially for Strictly, because Strictly has got to have a bit of bling and a bit of sequins. So, um, and I've got one of um, Michelle's bags as well, which I use often, which she made for me. And they're really, really lovely. And it's got this lovely um, lining. And in there, to go with your prize, I have put the um, skein of Biff Sugar Yarns. And it is, just reminding myself of the name. I knew the name, but I'm reminding myself. It's an amazing colourway. All of Alison's colours are amazing. But this is the amazing Flash Dance colourway. How cool is it? Look, I mean, how do you get all those colours into yarn without getting them all blended together. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's some kind of witchcraft and wizardry. So that is Flash Dance by Biff Sugar Yachts. And that is going in the bag by Michelle. And it's going in the envelope, which I've just realised I was holding up. And it probably has my address on it. So if I was doing that, I will go back and blur it out. <laughs> uh, oh, because I'm reusing the envelope. So that'll get sent to you. So Kim, if you could get in touch with me as well, uh, I will get that sent out. I think you're both in the UK, which is nice because all the other prizes so far have been all over the world. Um, okay, uh, the cozy up for winter mail. I forgot to mention something last time because I'm a complete idiot. Um, we have got five prizes uh, well, I, ha I have got five prizes, but Becky, who I'm running the make along with, has also got prizes. And Becky is an amazing sewer and an amazing yarn dyer. And she's got she's going to have some amazing prizes as well. Um, and these are things that um, I am not an amazing dyer or an amazing sewer. But these are prizes that other people who are good at things have donated. So we have got some gorgeous yarn from Felicity, who no longer is pebble beach yarn but is now iron bridge yarns no iron bridge dye works i something 
something that I'm now putting somewhere on the screen. Um, so she used to be Pebble Beach Yarns and um, she's changed it because she's moved house. So it more reflects where the area where she lives. Uh, and this gorgeous, gorgeous skein of yarn is Miss, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. It is a 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. And it is a four ply weight, 350 meters in 100 grams. Um, and it is beautiful. She sent me this. I bought two skeins of her uh, searching for seagulls yarn, which is just gorgeous. And she sent me this with that order as a prize. Um, and I, I said, would it be okay if I used it for this particular amount? And she said, yes, of course. Um, so I, I won't, I don't know whether to show you her card. I won't show you her card because it's no longer relevant, but I will put her details on the screen and in the links below. I'm also including with it a little stitch marker that Kaylee, who I mentioned earlier, who is Shadows at Midnight Knits. Now she doesn't sell anything, um, but she once sent me a little stitch marker. She sent me some lovely things once and in it she included this gorgeous little, very, very realistic donut progress keeper or stitch marker if it's crochet um, to, to, to use as a giveaway prize. How pretty is that? So I've popped that on the yarn as um, to go with that as a prize. We've also got um, as a pattern, this is the other thing I forgot to mention. Do you remember I made my um, daydreaming socks a couple of episodes ago? Well I absolutely love those and they are doing me very well at the moment because it's very muddy. I've been wearing my wellies and my uh, daydreaming socks have been keeping me very comfortable. I get chill blamed. Does anyone else get those? They're really painful. But the, because um, they're DK weight these socks. Oh uh, god they just keep my toes so warm. Uh, anyway, a prize, a pattern prize. What am I saying? Words. I forgot to mention last time that Viv had donated a copy of that pattern as a prize for the Cozy Up the Winter Mail, which is a really generous thing to do. The pattern itself actually has three different options. Um, so you could make the same pair of socks three times and have three different pairs of socks, if that makes sense. They're a crochet sock pattern for DK Weight Yarn. Uh, and it, it is a really, really well-written pattern. So thank you so much for that, Viv, for donating that as an extra prize. Um, there is also, let's just go back and I shall tell you what the other prizes were. Um, the bag that I mentioned earlier from Jilly at Mrs S Creations. There's also another beautiful bag um, from Sharon, who is Sharon Crafty Creations. And a pattern, uh, the Your Favourite Brew Shawl from Jen Sheelan and there's uh, possibly another thing on the way from my chaotic bliss as i mentioned earlier right okay so i think that's everything to do with the mouse don't forget to use the hashtags don't forget to tell me in the strictly sock along fo thread how you are bending the rules and cheating because there will be a prize for that at the end and yeah keep sharing all your things there's quite a few things appearing on instagram for the cozy up for winter mouth i've only made two things so far so i really need to crack on cozy up some things. I've got so many ideas in my head of things that I want to make and not enough time. Uh, right, sharing the love. Uh, there was just one um, person I wanted to mention in sharing the love today and that is Carrie and she has just started a new podcast um, which is called My Wool Mitten. She is my, sorry if I'm looking down, I'm just going, right. Um, she's My Wool Mitten on Ravelry and Instagram and now YouTube. Carrie lives on a small holding or a farm in Michigan in the United States. Um, I have followed her for a long long time um, and we have done a swap before in the past and just recently he, she has started a really really lovely kind of vloggy podcast about life on her farm where she lives with her husband and they raise Corridale sheep and I'm gonna get this wrong fin sheep possibly uh, they've got a very small flock of this sheep and they use their um, uh, fleece for spinning and making yarn I've had some of the yarn from their farm I've been very lucky enough to receive that in swaps and I also once won some in one of uh, Carrie's um, cows uh, and it's absolutely beautiful I made my Mary Margaret tan uh, using the uh, yarn uh, from Carrie's sheep, from Carrie's farm, um, and it's called My Serenity Farms Yarn, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's really worth watching. It's very um, 
refreshing, um, refreshingly different type of vlog and very, very interesting and a slightly different side of um, knitting and fibre than you might be used to in podcasts with lots of brightly coloured hand dyed yarn and crazy cows and project bags and things. This is a much calmer thing to watch. Don't watch me, go and watch Carrie. Um, okay, so that's my sharing the love. I'm very sorry, I feel like I have been extremely rambly and extremely quick. Um, I can see that I've been talking for about an hour, so that's quite good for me. Hopefully it won't take me too long to edit it. That is because anything that I have missed or left out is going to be covered in Vlogmas. I don't know if I'm going to get another podcast out before Christmas, but I'm hoping what to do, what I'll do is do Vlogmas and then at the end of Vlogmas finish with a podcast episode which will be my last before the end of the year and I don't know if I'll carry on Vlogmas until the end of the year or just stop at Christmas. We'll see, we'll see how it's going, we'll, we'll take it easy. Um, so yeah I'll see you again on Saturday. So by the time this goes up it'll probably be very late Tuesday or early Wednesday morning. And I'll be back on Saturday, the first day of Vlogmas. And in between then and now, I've got to go to a gift service rehearsal tonight at the church. I've got to work. I've got my wedding anniversary. I have to go to the tip because I'm just looking at a load of stuff in the garden that needs to be taken there and leaves to be raked up. And Phoebe will turn eight on Friday. So that's quite a lot to happen between now and Saturday. <laughs> so hopefully um, I'll be bright eyed and bushy tailed and ready to do some vlogging. And I will see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye.